This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello, good morning, good evening, wherever you're watching from, and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. This is a Ionity charger with a dead screen, apparently, but I think it is charging. And that means one thing, we are in Europe. And I am in Germany with the new Porsche Taycan. This is the refreshed one for 2025 with insane charging performance, insane range. We've already done a hyper mile range test of over 465 miles on this car on a single charge. However, this is the first time I'm able to bring to you a real 70 mile per hour highway range test of the Taycan 4S Sport Turismo. Now this particular version, we're not getting in the US, but it'll give us a really good impression of what the Taycans will be able to do uh, on a charge because this is kind of middle of the road. The sedans will be a little bit more efficient. The cross Turismos will be a little bit less efficient. And so this will kind of be a nice average, I think. It's specced pretty nicely. It's got the aero wheels, but these are the big aero wheels. There's a 19 and 21 inch option. These are the ones I would go for. I think this is the correct wheel and tire package. So in this video, what I'm going to walk you through, of course, is the spec on this car. It's the first of many videos to come over the next week or so on the refresh Taycan as I run this through a bunch of tests here in Europe. I flew all the way over here just so I could get the videos ahead of the US cars coming. So for all the Taycan nerds out there, we're getting the numbers for you. And um, then, of course, I'll walk you through the testing procedures and we'll see how far this goes on a charge. <laughs> Well guys, it has taken me all day to shoot this video, truly. I woke up at, I don't know, 5.30, 6 a.m., something like that. I was gonna get the car charged and leave right as the sun was coming up, and I did. And uh, halfway through my initial range test, the roads just got jammed. And they stayed jammed pretty much all over the country all day. I know that because I've been driving all day to find a clean stretch of road. And I thought, okay, it's Mother's Day after a holiday weekend, which means an extended weekend for a lot of Germans. And it's a Sunday. So yeah, everyone's just trying to get back home. Wrong day to do the testing for sure. Um, I just want to make sure we're actually charging. I did plug in. I did plug in charge. Oh yeah, we are charging. Great. At uh, 200 kilowatts at 62%. So pretty good. The battery was not preconditioned coming over here or anything. Usually holds about 300 kilowatts at 62%. Uh, but I didn't tell it we were going to charge. Um, just a dead screen here and then that dispenser is not working at all. Is Ionity having issues? Another dead screen all the way on the end. So there's only one fully functioning Ionity, huh? And interestingly, that NBV Alpitronic unit over there is also completely dead. So I feel like I'm at home now in the US, you can see the red ring of death there uh, because of this station. But truly I've been to, I don't know, maybe eight or nine different charging stations in the last two days of me being in Germany. And this is the first time I'm seeing any major issues. Earlier today, I did see a line at a 10 stall NBV station. That was pretty crazy. But again, this is peak travel time. Now the roads are lightening up, things are settling down and we should be good to go for a 70 mile per hour highway range test. Now, I think you'll all agree with me, this car just looks incredible. The Taycan uh, has a small styling refresh for 2025. You really notice it more on the Turbo and Turbo S models on the wagons, the Sport and Cross Turismo, because you get an extra vent back here. But because this is the 4S with the more efficient motor set up, it doesn't actually get the uh, little fake vent back there. I can't remember if it's real or fake. I think it's fake. Um, but it does have the updated styling up front, this more angular uh, situation, the new headlights. If you're curious about all the changes and technical updates to this car because that's where most of the work has been done. I already have many deep dive episodes, but one in particular walking you through all of the upgrades and changes for this year. So I think what I want to do, of course, is kick off our week of testing with the Taycan. We're going to do a thousand mile challenge, thousand kilometer challenge, thermal challenges. Who knows what we're going to get ourselves into over the next few days, but we're starting here with range um, because I need the you know, basically the freshest tire for all the efficiency stuff and a 10% challenge and all that stuff. Let me walk you through the spec on this car, some of the changes. I'll go through the testing procedures. By that point, we'll be at 100% and it'll be time to hit the Autobahn and just sit at 70 miles per hour instead of 700 miles per hour, which is 
legal because there is no speed limit on many of it, especially at night. So this is the new updated Taycan. What does that mean for this test? Well, we have 97 kilowatt hour usable up from 83.7 kilowatt hour usable. So a much larger battery pack than the previous generation car. 105 kilowatt hour gross here, still using pouch cells, absolute charging machine. I have a video walking you through the charging performance of this car. Um, it's so hard. You know, I've been saying new Taycan's great. Of course, this is, you know, sort of the benchmark in many categories, but like the previous car was still the benchmark in many categories and they've depreciated so, so hard. Maybe you should just buy a used Taycan, like get a, even like a used Turbo or Turbo S instead of a new 4 or 4S. After having this car this last couple days though, really romping on it on several occasions, wow. It's, it's a major step up from the previous car. I mean, everything, it's a lot of just intangibles, little things I can't explain to you, it's wild. So we have a uh, new permanent magnet motor, uh, no silicon carbide in this one, only the turbo GT gets silicon carbide inverters. Um, however, it's got the new more efficient motors. It still has the two speed transmission, which will help on the 70 mile per hour range test. Uh, when I lock the car in range mode, I'm gonna set the suspension all the way down. We'll be good to go. Speaking of the suspension, this car is equipped with Porsche Active Ride, which I'll talk about more in other videos. It's not so necessary for our range test video, but it is really cool all the stuff the car can do and just the handling possibilities that Active Ride unlocks. It's an expensive option, probably for most people not worth it, but for me, definitely worth it as someone who appreciates driving dynamics and just unlocking new possibilities with uh, adaptive suspension, which there's really not much like this out there. There are systems similar, but this is tuned really well. Okay, so we got big battery. We got, I don't even know, this car's not EPA range rated, this particular version, so I'm not sure what the EPA range will be. I don't think the EPA ranges have even been announced for new Taycan yet, uh, but they always go farther than what Porsche says, at least in the past, that's what they have done. So, um, yeah, let me walk you through the testing procedures and uh, then we'll hit the road. Well, guys, I've set the tire pressures to the manufacturer suggested pressures when cold. I let the car sit in cold soak for a few hours, hit the pressures and we're good to go. We are on the Hankook Evo Ion or Hankook Ion Evo tire. It's an OE tire. It's a 245 tire up front, uh, which is narrower than the other 21 inch wheel options. So uh, I think these wheels, A, look the best and they are a little bit narrower so you lose max performance and max handling however i think for most drivers in most situations this is the wheel and tire package to go for you do not have to go for the ugly 19 inch wheels which truly are ugly uh and this just looks so much better and then i think we're on 285s in the rear it's a pretty big stagger as typical for tycon just seeing if i can find the badge there we are 285 35 21 in the rear um, this car is also equipped with just standard steel brakes, but that, again, shouldn't impact our testing at all. So uh, Sport Turismo is not available actually in the U.S. market anymore, and that is only because the GTS variant has not been announced for the refresh Taycan. We will get it back when assumingly, I'm assuming, that Porsche will come out with the GTS trim of this car. That will come to the U.S. I think we can pretty much be sure of that. And then we'll get the Sport Turismo. But in the U.S., we only get the sedan and the Cross Turismo, the lifted version of this with the plastic cladding. I, honestly, I think this is the version that's best. It's the one I would want. Uh, and I actually think the 4S, you know, normally in the previous cars, like, ah, you got to get the Turbo or Turbo S if you really want crazy performance. This thing rips way harder than the last 4S. It's crazy. It could use a higher top speed here on the Autobahn, but it still does 160 miles an hour. Near as makes no difference. Pretty crazy. Um, but wow, it's it. this car feels like the old turbo to me uh, in terms of performance. So I'm not really sure you're, for most people you need any more than the 4S. This is kind of plenty of spice to have some fun now, which the last 4S was just a little bit less than I was hoping for. Uh, just to walk you through the spec on this one, we have the cool active sunroof that you can, you know, change in particular sections to be completely translucent or what's the opposite of translucent? I don't know. Um, opaque, opaque, translucent. Uh, don't, don't come to me with those words. I don't know. Um, but basically you can block it off, open it up, and it has a bunch of sections. You can do patterns. That's a cool option. Uh, this one, like I mentioned, has Porsche Active Ride which when it's charging and turned on, it doesn't lift up, but most of the time lifts up so it's easier to get in and out of. 
Uh, you can see there are screens back here as well. I probably wouldn't recommend that option. This is the new interior surface. Really like that quite a bit. Um, I actually think maybe this interior is leather free or at least very reduced leather in this particular one. So we're DC charging up and um, the test, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna leave here just north of Stuttgart. So we're actually not very far from where this car was engineered and produced, just down the road actually. And um, we're gonna leave here at 100% state of charge once it completes. We're gonna go up about halfway. I don't know, we'll find a route, come back the same route, loop style range test to counteract any elevation. There really isn't any, and there's almost no wind today. It's perfect range testing conditions. It's gonna be a little bit colder than I would like. It's gonna be about 68 degrees tonight, I think, maybe 65 it'll dip down to, something like that, but still totally fine. We should get a nice representative number out of this car today. And uh, we probably won't end at this station, but on the other side of the highway, literally right there, there is the other side. Um, you know, at the other service center on the southbound side. We're heading north towards uh, Frankfurt and up from there, but it's going to be middle of the night, so it should be totally fine. So anyway, that's a lot of information on the car. 320 kilowatt charging. It's insane. This is a road tripping beast. I'll have a video showcasing 1,000 kilometer, hopefully 1,000 mile uh, sort of full send test, and we're going on a 70 mile per hour range test now, so let's do it. All right, we are charging, and we are charging pretty slow at 80%. It really dips hard, 79%. Probably was just ripping and then tapered here at 79%. Uh, I already have a full charging performance uh, video on this car, so if you're curious how this new battery charges, check it out. It's insane. And uh, let's look at where we're roughly going to go. So this is a little bit concerning, all of this traffic section here. I mean, this is only a few kilometers, but it's still okay. Hopefully by the time we come back, that will be gone, at least going up and towards Frankfurt should be totally fine. So we'll probably go up to Frankfurt, maybe we'll go towards Cologne over this way, something like that, flip a UE and then come back down here and run it to as dead as we can possibly get it. Uh, so a full 70 mile per hour highway range test. In terms of settings on the car, what we need to do is we're gonna go drive mode, not sport, we're gonna go range. So range mode, passenger display, switches off, um, you know, we're going to go in the most efficient climate settings we can. We have eco climate. We don't actually need passenger air. So similar to like the Hyundai Kia vehicles, you can run, um, you know, driver only air. So we would do that as an example. So I can come here and just keep my vents on just nerd, nerd little things, but this is how we run every vehicle. Also some nice air quality menus in here as well. It's very clean, which is great. Um, we have the ionizer off, not, not really needed for this scenario. Other settings, we're going to run between 68 and 72 on climate control, all ancillary loads completely switched off. The only thing we will have to run are headlights, but those are like almost no draw. They're like 15 watts or 30 watts on full beam. I think maybe they go up to 40. They can go a little bit higher here. Uh, we're also going to run automatic regen rather than on. And automatic regen will prioritize coasting, which is more efficient until we come up on a vehicle and then ramp in regen. Of course, the brake pedal down here is a blended brake pedal. So as I hit the brake pedal, do regen first and then switch to friction brakes. So I hope that tells you a little bit about the Taycan. Please don't leave anyone in the car. I should probably show you the roof just so you can understand what's going on here. You can see I have this slider and this slider, whoa, yeah, it probably looks like your screen is glitching out, but honestly, that's how it looks in person. Like I can go halfway, I can go block by block. It's really crazy what this, what this roof can do. And then they have like some, you know, pre-programmed um, little uh, placeholder blocks that you can do, and this is their recommended ones. How sick is that? We'll probably just run matte, since that is the default no energy draw state. It energizes to go clear, is my understanding. So this should be the most efficient setting for the roof. Again, going to the nth degree of optimization, as we always do. Uh, we're going to be running with the suspension completely slammed, as it is right now. I think the car looks great. I really honestly only drive it in low suspension. That's just gets it just looks so good when it's on the ground and i feel like with the active ride it actually gets lower than the last sport turismo i had although maybe it's a sport turismo cross turismo thing in my head because i also had that silver turbo cross uh sport turismo uh maybe a year or two ago with you guys we did top speed runs everything with that car and it sat nice and low as well when we dumped it out 
So I think I'm gonna grab a quick snack since it does take a while to top charge from 90 to 100%, and then we'll hit the road as soon as- So the battery pack in this Taycan is 97 kilowatt hour usable, 105 gross, but that's really slow charging for a battery with a big buffer. It's possible that most of the buffer is on the bottom side because it's just sitting at 1.6 kilowatts. This is very similar to Tesla and other vehicles that don't have much of a top buffer, really just go slow right at the very end just to trickle in the last little bit of juice. And um, keep in mind, I do have the climate control running, which maybe only 500 watts is going into the battery pack. Although actually, no, that's not true. This gauge is what's going into the battery and then the charger is probably sending like two and a half kilowatts to the car, something like that. So um, yeah, I mean, it's gonna take a minute to complete, but once it does, we will uh, shut off climate instantly, reset the trip computers and hit the road. There we go, charging process has completed. Ooh, active ride lifting me up. You can see we went from slam to full lift here. And uh, that was just to make it easier to get in and out of, happens instantly. It's kind of a funny feeling. So we should be able to grab the charging handle now and throw it here. Won't give us any stats because the screen is dead. Flap is up, charge port should close itself automatically, which is great. And uh, we are off. So let's go through here. We'll reset the trip calculation. Boom, reset. Since you can see the car just went back down, we're at 100%. It's predicting 493 kilometers, but keep in mind we did 465 miles in the sedan, but that was not at 70 miles an hour. We'll run 72 degrees eco. Let's just make sure all the settings are correct there. We're looking good. We're in range mode. Everything is set. Let's pull out of here and off we will go on the highway. In the drive, seatbelt on. Let's do this heading out on the range test. Now, I'll do a whole video on driving the new Taycan and all of my impressions of this car versus the old car, sort of a pros and cons list, uh, because this car really is so refined in so many areas compared to the previous car. And the previous car is still great, but uh, this one is, is sort of next level, no question. So um, looks like we gotta make our way right over here. We have to get to 112 kilometers per hour. So we should be able to set that right there, 112. It's technically 112.5. So it's dinging at us because we're slightly over the speed limit, but I have a hot key set to turn that off. So now there we go. And we're doing 70 miles an hour. So see you along the way, I'll keep you updated. Should be a fun drive. So it is a perfect evening for some driving. You can see the traffic is almost completely gone. Uh, we are set at 113 indicated, which it's technically 112.6. So this is exactly 70 miles per hour. And if I come over to show you the driver assistance menu, whoops, this one, uh, the Taycan driver assistance has been much improved for this generation where uh, lane centering still is not autopilot locked in. It definitely uh, does shut off sometimes if there's a lot of glare on the camera or if there's tight corners, it's more of truly an assist, but it's a capacitive wheel now, at least it feels that way. And um, man, people are ripping out here, it's awesome. A uh, capacitive wheel and it will actually do some cool traffic jam assistance stuff as well. So very pleased uh, with the upgrades there. I wish it was still even better. I think the Macan might be even better than this in terms of uh, my experience with the driver assistance. But the route I've just roughly put in here, I'm just going to go up in that direction, Frankfurt towards Cologne, and then we'll turn around when we make it back here pretty low. Then we'll loop around, of course, as we get back to this area until it runs completely dead. Should be fun. Really looking forward to the results on this one since it's uh, technically my second time running a 70 mile per hour range test. I never posted the first time. Uh, we did it with the same prototype car I did a, um, you know, the hyper mile drive with. It was just pouring rain uh, when we did the 70 mile per hour run. And yeah, just didn't work out that well for the uh, efficiency. So we kind of scrapped that video. There was just nothing we could do. So we ended up doing the hypermile video, which was just kind of fun, just an experiment more or less. And now I have the charging planner off. We're in the Sport Turismo. It's gonna let me get down to 0% without preconditioning for a charger or getting in the way. It's gonna be as efficient as we uh, typically are on these runs. And thankfully we're doing it now at nighttime where it is pretty tame traffic. So yeah, let's, let's keep rolling. Keep you updated throughout the way.
Well guys, we are now at 75% state of charge. It's taken an hour and 23 minutes to get here. And um, you know, the conditions have been great. I think we had one construction zone for about less than a kilometer. I just dropped the speed, came back up. It's been nearly perfect conditions. A huge sigh of relief uh, because all day I'm like, oh my gosh, the roads are so busy. They were perfect on Saturday when I got here and I was kicking myself for not doing a range test right away, but this is all working out. So pretty good efficiency, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. Not incredible, but then I think, okay, we're on the 21 inch wheels and the long roof, the sedan on 19s would be better. No one's really gonna buy the 19s though. These are the wheels you want. So this is, like I said, a pretty average result. But even then we're on track for very high 300 miles. Uh, actually up until we dipped below 80%, we were on track for over 400 miles and that was pretty impressive but of course there's elevation in one direction and we're gonna counteract it on the way back but right now we've driven 154 kilometers and we've used only 25 percent of the battery pack uh, you compare that to when i was driving at top speed i was using um, 154 kilometers to a full battery pack and uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see uh, just because we have a unique opportunity in germany with that symbol right there indicating no speed limits. Let me know if you want to see a range test at max speed. I would be really curious to see what that turns out to be. All right, folks, it is time to make our turnaround. We're at 59% state of charge and uh, we're making our turnaround. We've gone 230 kilometers so far. I don't want to miss the exit, so I'm going to bring this up to the um, route guidance and then I can show you the route planner is currently off so it's not adding chargers but it says we're going to get to our starting point at two percent which is pretty good i think so uh and if we, we'll have some room to maybe add an exit here or there as we get a little bit closer the route planner and the tycon pretty accurate but always a little bit pessimistic as you want we're up to three percent already so now i need to go let's think that's a rest area we need to go to the left make a make a u-turn jump back on the highway the other direction. Let's do it. Oh boy, I just missed the 50% check-in. We're at 49%. Let's take a look at the stats. We are 280 kilometers in, so maybe 600 kilometers is not possible, but 550 plus or minus, I don't know. It's now up to a 4% arrival at our finish, so we definitely need to get an extra loop in somewhere. The problem is though, uh, there's no like frontage roads to run down near the charger, so I really need to play around with the exits ahead um, of that charger because we could get screwed and I'm not even sure the number to call if you die on the side of the road in Germany. Um, I think it's, you call it ADAC, which is like their AAA. I'm sure I could Google it, whatever. Um, all right, so we got some driving to do. We're gonna have to get creative towards the end and loop around where there's a little bit more exit density. So even kind of starting now, I'm counting the kilometers between exits. And that way, if there's something that's only like 10 kilometers, I will do that to burn off that 4% because that would be, you know, 20 kilometer round trip. Um, which should get us pretty close to being dead or even maybe too much on the other side. Uh, it's all a math problem, all fun. Anyway, the fizzy water has been good, but I've been mostly drinking Red Bull and it is past midnight, but I'm still on US time. So it's like lunchtime in the US. So I'm wide awake, all is good, let's keep rolling. We are now on the return leg at 38% state of charge. Nice having this capacitive wheel with the driver assistance really working well, doing a great job. The matrix LED headlights I can show you here now on automatic light up all the areas around the cars and it's really, really high quality and extremely bright. Um, very, very good headlights and they even, not in range mode because range mode uses a reduced power output setting, uh, but maybe in a future video I can show you, maybe when we do our top speed video, when you're in normal mode, anything but range, you get full power from the headlights and it puts a magic carpet out in the lane ahead of you. Really cool stuff. By the way guys, this is the um, little carpet light that goes out in front of the car. So you can see, uh, you know, it's sort of highlighting the lane that we're driving in. For example, if I move to the right lane, you'll be able to see it extend wide and then it will just highlight our lane. And you can see the Taycan, very stable, very comfortable, easy to drive at high speed. 
This is, for example, roughly 160 miles an hour, and we'll just give these people a little bit of room, but just absolutely easy to drive at any speed, this car. So nice. Anyway, I've got the arrival down to 0% state of charge right now. Uh, we're basically gonna go one exit past and then go up north to where we started this test. So we'll go to that same station. And um, yeah, so that, that should work pretty well. And then, you know, if we get there at zero, I can also do a uh, another charging test just to verify the results that we got in the first video. Probably not to um, uh, make another video or anything, but just to double confirm the results that we got. We may as well. So yeah, I think we got a pretty good plan here. 0% arrival, let's do it. We are cruising and we are at 25% state of charge and we have just about 400 kilometers driven. So, um, you know, if you do the math, pretty simple. This is a 500 kilometer car at uh, 70 miles an hour. And I'm actually doing 114 right now, just because um, I was doing a little bit of speedometer calculation. And so I just need to run a short time at 114 to even it out uh, so that we're doing uh, 70. So I've done those calcs and we're all good. But um, yeah, look at that, 25%, 399.2 kilometers. Dang, it's awesome. Also, this 240 kilowatt charging, this is on instant plug-in. But after about 30 seconds to a minute of being plugged in, then it would do 300 kilowatts. So I think Porsche should say what it thinks it would do after, uh, you know, 30 seconds or one minute, but this is the initial plug-in. What is it gonna request? as soon as you plug in there. But there you have it, 25%, 400 kilometers driven. We're gonna keep going and uh, see what happens. Friends, we have now reached 10% state of charge. And I've altered our trip plan ever so slightly where we're gonna go even one more exit further and then it's showing a negative 1% arrival. I do like how it goes into the negatives because it shows me how much I have to make up. And I think it is slowly crawling its way. It says 35 kilometers uh, remaining and that is based off of trip elevation and speed. I don't know if the camera can pick it up but there's a little navigation arrow next to the fueling station. That means that it's taking into account our route and um, we have just a delta of two kilometers right now but it was four and it's slowly walking its way down. So I think we're gonna arrive pretty much completely dead. So um, I don't know, I don't wanna die on the side of the road. I'm not even gonna use high beams. I think it is that close. <laughs> we're just like gonna be coming in on fumes or the equivalent of fumes. So yeah, I mean, still got climbing on, everything is normal, all, you know, same procedures, but uh, yeah, fingers crossed we make it. We have officially got it to 0% arrival, perfect. And uh, we're actually already past where we're going. We're gonna go basically down and then turn around and come back up. And uh, you can see we have limited power at the moment, but uh, still plenty, I mean, probably plenty to do 120, 130 miles an hour, <laughs> even with this limited power uh, light on. And then this situation here, the car still rips. It's so funny, I was actually um, on some twisty roads earlier today and allegedly a Golf R came up behind me and I was at, I don't know, 6% state of charge. And yeah, this thing's still at random and I was at 6%, he couldn't keep up. And he, he was really overdriving the car a bit. Um, I would say like, you know, going out of his lane and stuff. And I was just, you know, very nicely balanced in this thing. And at 6%, you know, just it's a momentum car at that point, And it was awesome. Uh, I was like, this is amazing. I'm dead and I'm still faster than a pretty serious hot hatch. And uh, yeah, so 0% arrival. We're sticking to the plan. We're doing this. The problem is we have a big climb on the way up but it should regen a little bit here. And the Porsche engineers actually said it is more efficient in this car to let it regen a little bit like this than it is to let it coast. And of course we're doing the 70 mile per hour test. So we're just keeping it as such. So this is our first bailout option. This was the original plan to turn out here. That was drop number two. And you can see that that would have got us to the charger with, um, I don't know, one or 2% here. Um, yeah, we are now heading uh, to the next one, basically. We've just committed. Holy smokes. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I don't know if we're gonna make it, but we're gonna get everything we can out of this car. I'm just stuck in the right lane. Here's our exit. We're at 5% state of charge. It says, please charge battery. So we have 18 kilometers left, and I think 18 kilometers to get to the charging station. That sounds good, but I hope there was a little bit of elevation increase getting back. 
If it doesn't look like we're gonna make it, there is a bailout exit that seems to have at least an AC charger. Okay, then we're really cutting it a little close here. So I don't really think you're allowed to drive on the German Autobahn knowing you're gonna run out of charge. Hmm, well, we'll just pretend like we don't know we're about to run out of charge and all should be okay. We are now merging back onto the highway, gentle accelerations as we go. And you can see there, it shows the 0% arrival. I deleted out the midway points because we don't need it anymore. So still just gently accelerating, getting our speed back up there. But we have 16 kilometers to go and 19 kilometers on the dash. That seems pretty good. I think we're gonna make it, folks. It keeps tottering between zero and 1% arrival. So um, it's thinking and it's thinking like things are gonna be just fine. And I trust the Tycon route planner. This is one of the very few that I really trust see it's up to 1% now. So all things are staying the same. We're still keeping the same testing procedures. We're on our way back now. And guys, we are officially in turtle mode, 2% state of charge. You can see our power is extremely limited, but so is our regen, surprisingly. Um, interesting, but we're just coasting down. All is good. Uh, shows a 1% arrival still, so we should be able to make it. And uh, by the time we make it there, we would have gone over 500 kilometers, which is pretty impressive, I have to say. But 2% is when it really just limits the performance, and I think that's just to try and help you extend your range. Rivian kind of does the same thing. So, yeah, let's keep rocking. I think we should be, should be good here. There's the sign. We can pretty much push it in from here. We have all the warning lights on. The battery light there, the turtle mode there, 1% state of charge. Very typical out of spec situation going on here. And we are 1.3 kilometers away, but that's because it's on the far side of the parking lot. And here it is. Let's not miss the exit. I don't think it's this one. Yes, it is. Uh, gotta look here. Yes, I think this is it. Great. Coming in under regen, 500.5 kilometers at 70 miles per hour. We'll have to look what all this is in miles, but I think it's around 310 miles plus or minus, which is pretty good for the wagon version on the big, big aero wheels, but still big wheels. So let's think about the best way over to the chargers. It says this way, at least we've stopped at a little um, rest area. So if it dies now, we're fine, but we have enough momentum. This thing just rolls to get over to the charger. And um, yeah, my understanding is, if I remember, it's all the way back here. We have to go to the farthest one and straight back. Yes. All right, cool beans. We freaking made it, folks. I'll give you the final tally in a minute. We're still technically driving over there on frontage roads. <laughs> oh wait, got a break. Coming in here. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, we have arrived. And we're gonna actually go to the only fully functioning Ionity unit, which is this one, if I remember correctly. That way we can see the charging performance on the screen. So there we go. That was a freaking range test. Now I would have probably gone a couple kilometers farther, but it's not like we were any near any major milestones and I have no place to go. I could drive around the parking lot, but I don't actually know if I can because it's filled with trucks over there. It's just gridlocked. So that's the range test. We're pretty much dead. Ran it all the way down to 1%. I mean, I think uh, zero is zero in this car. So let's just say it could go another four kilometers. I don't know, maybe three kilometers plus or minus. I wouldn't say that. And we're all good. We have made it. So uh, what I'm going to do now is convert this into miles so we can get the final tally uh, in the miles calculation. So if I go here to settings, all the way down, system, units, uh, speed and distance, MPH. We got 311 miles. And that's at, you know, pretty much really high. You know, a lot of the times this number is 67, 66. We were almost right on the money right there. So that's awesome. And 3.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Hmm. I would have liked to see a little bit better efficiency. I'm sure the sedan certainly will do it. Oh, it still uses active ride. I don't know if you can see the car shoot up like that. And... Man, that's the range test of the Taycan Sport Turismo. Looking very silly now with the hydraulic suspension pushing the car up. So we'll let it hit zero, we'll plug it in and we'll charge it from zero to full. Well, this message popped up, which usually comes up right when you're at the bottom. And then there's a restart where you can actually get a little bit more out of the Taycan as well, like a couple hundred watt hours 
uh, right at the bottom. If it dies, you can turn it back on and then it'll go again. So anyway, we probably could have got a little bit more out of it. I would say three instead of 311 miles, maybe 314, 315 if everything was perfect, but no way for us to do that. I think we got pretty close here. So let's uh, start up the testing procedures now that we're at 0% and uh, yeah, charge it up to full. That'll be a topic. So for you can see completely dead. We were at about 670 volts. It's now starting to throw some current in there, brought it up. 690 and it's uh just over 800 maybe 820 full something like that so uh it will request 400 amps when everything is perfect but tycons do kind of ramp up slowly to about three percent and there you go there now it's going for the full send yeah just about 400 amps and it's going to sit there from two percent <laughs> flat out all the way to about I don't know, 60% state of charge. It still holds 62%, 300 kilowatts. I don't know thermally if it can handle that. We're certainly gonna find out here. We could get a little bit early D rate, I'm not sure. But uh, also from the Ionity station, I don't know if this thing can handle it. It's a lot of juice, but let's see what happens. It's ripping 300 kilowatts right now, 294 being delivered to the car. Hasn't kicked on a cooling fan, hasn't done anything, doesn't seem to care. And it says it's getting everything it wants it's ripping this will be kind of interesting for you guys i know i said it'll be a different video but you can see just how quickly pack voltage came up we were really dead on the ground and that's very typical of uh nmc chemistry where you know it'll have a slight discharge curve and right at the bottom it tanks and so that's where you have bottom voltage uh, protection in the vehicles that's why they stop themselves from going all the way and uh, you put a little bit of charge in them and they come right off the ground and then they'll hold stable like this and just slowly climb all the way up to 100%. But yeah, it's just doing 400 amps, 300 kilowatts still. Dang, this is uh, it's awesome. We've done 10% in two minutes. <laughs> and in five minutes or so, we've done 25% of the battery. The fans are ripping now. And what's cool is the Tycon actually takes the extra power needed for the cooling from the charger. So the charger will you know, the battery is going to always just get its maximum and any cooling requests or anything, it's going to pull from the charger. So you can run HVAC, you can run a bunch of stuff. And I think maximum I've seen it pull is something like 420 amps uh, just to compensate for the extra load of the cooling systems. A really smart design. We're noticing more EVs do stuff like this when they have the extra capacity to do so. I'm really glad Porsche takes advantage of it here with the Taycan. So that means that even though 315, 316 kilowatts is coming out of the charger, uh, what's actually going into the battery pack should be a little bit less. Yeah, it's 312 going into the battery pack right now, but it's still just holding full send. And sometimes this gauge is a little bit, meh, a little bit averagey, but uh, at least over here, yeah, it's at least a little bit more accurate. I think that does sort of a cumulative average over a period of time, so it doesn't change the numbers as fast. I'd like to see the granularity increased in the car because you can see it just dropped to 300 there, but we're still giving it everything. Well, guys, that kind of finishes up the range test here of the Taycan. And in 38 minutes, we are at 96% from zero. And that is without preconditioning and it got a little bit hot. So let's just call it maybe 35 minutes from zero to 95% if it's a preconditioned battery. Wow, crazy. But think about this. You charge for 10 minutes, zero to 50% and you get two hours of driving at highway speed, even a little bit more. That's a pretty good ratio. I think we're, we're getting there with EVs, especially if you had the sedan version, that would be, I think, quite a bit more efficient than this car, as well as the 19 inch wheels. And keep in mind, it was in the mid 60s today. So the 311 miles, I think, is not as impressive to me. I was hoping to see a 350 somewhere around there at 70 miles an hour. I think the sedan can do it. We noticed that the cross Turismo and sport Turismo in our testing were always about 50 miles, 40, 50 miles behind the sedans. And so maybe I just had a little bit higher expectations for the Taycan in terms of range. Um, but I have to say for a wagon, that charges so fast, that sits comfortably at 160 miles an hour. For me personally, the range is more than enough. It's all I need. Uh, but I do wish it was a little bit more efficient. We'll have to get a sedan on test as soon as possible and run it in Colorado at higher elevation, which is more the comparable numbers. But a really fun test that was. I'm glad we really got the baseline for this car. 
getting the baseline charging. I'll fill in the rest of the graph with the thermal stuff later on. But what else should we do with this thing? I have it for the week. So I'm gonna do a 10% challenge, of course. This might be the new king of the 10% challenge. We'll give it a go. I was also thinking about doing a range test at VMAX at max speed. That could be interesting. And maybe even a 10% challenge at high speed. Maybe we'll do like a whole high speed testing video. We have the opportunity to do so here in Germany. So I think we should seize that opportunity and definitely test this thing. I also want to do a driving dynamics review with the new car with the active ride. There's a lot that goes into this system and a lot of little changes and updates. So I'll probably do that as well. But yeah, let me know what else you guys want to see. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. The range test was fun. The charging test was fun. This was really uh, just a great day at work. It's now, I don't know, 3.40 in the morning, something like that, 3.10 in the morning. I don't know. Um, my watch is dead. So yeah, probably time to go to bed.